Welcome to week six of Collaborative Corner. Home, Home edition. edition! This week in art, we are going to continue working on our paper design project for our sketchbooks. Today in music, we are going to continue reviewing the notes we talked about last week, and I'm going to challenge you to speak some of those notes in rhythm. But first, let's introduce our special guest. Hi, everyone. I sure am missing our computer lab time. I have heard some good reports on some great computer learning over these fast past few weeks. Keep up the great work. See ya. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, last week we talked about our note names, note values, and the rhythm syllables that we speak these notes on. But today I'm going to challenge you to speak some of these notes in rhythm. Before we do that, let's get a quick recap on some of our notes. Here's the first one. What is this? Do you remember from last week? I want you to repeat after me. Say quarter note. Quarter. All right, this gets one beat and we say ta. Can you say that? Ta. Ta. Good. All right, what is this one? This is a group of eighth notes. Say eighth notes. Eighth notes. Good. Remember, we talked about this like it was a piece of pizza. There are two notes, but they only get one beat. It has two sounds, okay? So when we see this, when we see these two eighth notes together, we're going to say T T. Can you say that? T T. Good. All right. Our next one is dun, 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 the half note. Say half note. Good, it gets two beats and we say ta. Is that two beats? Yes. And last but not least, the whole note. Say whole note. Good, it gets four beats and we say to. Can you say that? Ready, go. To. Good, now I know a lot of you take piano and some of your piano teachers have actually taught you to say whole note, hold it. Is that still four beats? Yes, so if you wanna say that, you can. Very good. Now today, Miss Livingston has a piece of paper like this, and I have some beat bars that I've drawn across the top. And I'm going to write some notes, and I want us to speak them together. Now this is something you can do at home if you want to review some of your rhythms. And um, if you are in second, third, fourth, or fifth grade, we've done this a lot in my classroom. So I am going to challenge you. You hear that beeping? That's Miss Livingston's coffee pot. And my marker is going out just a little bit. Here we go. If you guys pay close attention in this video, you might get a little sneak peek of my kitty cats. I have two. Remember Gowan and Tenson? You might get to see them some because they like to, they tend to jump up here on my desk a lot while I'm here. Okay, here's the first one. Ready? All right, I'm gonna give you just a second. I want you to think it in your head while I point. Ready? Just think it. All right, I want you to think it one more time. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to say it together. Ready? One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Good. Okay, I might have to make this next one just a little harder because I think that one was a little too easy. Hmm, do you think it's gonna be hard? Oh. We'll have to see. All right, here's our second line. I want you to just think it in your head while I point. Just think. Ready? All right, I want you to think it one more time. All right, let's say this line together. One, two, ready, go. T, T, ta, T, T, ta. Good job. Do you think we can say both of these lines? I think we can. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, 
T, T, ta. Can you do it without me? Let's try. One, two, your turn, ready, go. Did you do it? Good job. All right, Miss Livingston might have to use a new marker because the other one is drying out just a little bit. But I think we should start incorporating our half notes. What do you think? Okay, let's look at our next line, line number three. Now you may say, Miss Livingston, why does that beat bar not have anything on it? Well, what note is this? It's a half note and it gets two beats. So can we put anything right there? No. So sometimes what I make you do, just like we did on our paper last week, is draw a little arrow to that beat so you know that the half note gets two beats and you can't write anything on that beat bar, okay? So before I help you say it, I want you to try it by yourself. Ready, go. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Here we go. Ready, okay. Good, let's do this line together. Ready, go. Ta, T, T, ta. Good, can we say all three of the lines? It's kind of tricky, Miss Livingston's reading it backwards, so. Here we go. Ta, ta, T, T, ta. T, T, ta, T, T, ta. Ta, T, T, ta. Good job. Oh, there's one of my kitty cats. Do you want to say hello? Come here. This is Gowan. And Gowan doesn't really like <laughs> being on the desk too much. He just likes to be where I am, uh, rubbing up against my leg and such. And now he's laying on the desk right here, if you want to see him. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> oh, and here's Tenson. This is Tenson. Look, look. Say hi. Tenson's very sweet. He loves the cuddles. Oh, and that's his good spot. He likes that right there. He loves it when you snuggle him and pet him. He loves to be up here on the desk. Okay, can you say hi? Look, look up. He's cute. Say bye. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our last line. I'm gonna draw four more beat bars. Once again, this is something really easy you can do at home. All you need is a piece of paper. You could even use a dry erase board if you have one at home. Um, and all you have to do is draw your four lines and then you can draw these notes. And you had practice drawing them last week, so I know you can do it. All right, so I'm going to make this one special. What is this? We just talked about it. It's a whole note, okay? But why is there nothing else on these three beat bars? How many beats does a whole note get? Do you remember? It gets four beats, very good. So we can't put anything on these three beat bars. So just like we did on our paper last week, I'm going to draw an arrow across all three of these bars to remind us that we can't put anything else there and to remind us that this note gets four beats. See? All right, do you remember what we say for this? Okay, let's just say this line all together. To. All right, I would really like it if we could say this whole thing together. So I am going to give you a couple of seconds to practice. Ready? Here we go. This is your practice time.
I hope you guys enjoyed reviewing our notes today. We are gonna go ahead and see what Miss Walters has for us, but I want you to keep practicing these notes because next week we're going to review some of our rests and get to incorporate them into our rhythm reading, okay? Today we are going to continue to work on our paper design project and I'm really excited for this installment of our video because this is my favorite paper design out of all the ones we've done so far. So you're gonna of course need a piece of paper, nine by 12 like we've talked about. You're gonna fold that piece of paper, short side to short side, get those corners lined up really nice. And we're gonna add a crease right down the center of our paper, okay? Now you can set this off to the side because we'll be needing it a little bit later. It's a little windy out here. It is a little windy out here. So what we're going to do now and if you're working outside and it's a windy day, maybe consider doing this activity inside, but I like the wind, so we're gonna work with it, okay? So I have a cup of water right here. It's filled about halfway up. You don't really need that much. You can put a little less water, but what I'm gonna do with this cup of water is I'm going to add a few drops of standard dish soap that you might have at home, okay? And what you are going to do after you've added your dish soap as you are going to get some of your liquid watercolor or what you can use as a substitute is our food coloring like we've been using for the last few weeks. Open the lid on that, put a few drops of your desired color into your water and soap combination. And you're gonna take your straw and stick the straw in the water and just blow some bubbles. You want those bubbles to come rise up to the top of um, the cup that you are going to be using. And what we're gonna do from there is we're gonna take our folded piece of paper and we are just going to stick our paper down on the lid of our cup, pull it up and blow again. You wanna have a nice amount of bubbles coming up above So a lot of the liquid watercolor right now still needs to be mixed in with our water and our soap. So I'm just gonna keep blowing until I get that desired color. Cause you can see a little bit of our blue here, but it's very, very faint. It means it's hard to see. Whoa, that's a big one, let's see. Okay, we're getting there. Let's do another. And if your color is a little too light, like right now I'm looking at my blue and it looks all right, but I'm gonna have to zoom in real close to Miss Livingston so she can show you what it looks like. So if you don't like how light it is, all you have to do is add a few more drops of that liquid watercolor or food coloring or whatever it is that you might have handy at home. Okay, I'm gonna stir that up just a little bit and blow some more bubbles. Let's see about this one. I think we got it on this one. Wow. See, now we have a lot more bubbles coming through. Okay. Now there are a couple of ways that we can do this activity. We used dish soap, water, and food coloring, or in my case, liquid watercolor for this part of the project. You can also use other items that you might have at your home, like some bubbles. So if you have bubbles at your house, all you need to do is get a cup, an empty cup, pour a little bit of that bubble concoction in the bottom of it. So now I've got bubbles in the bottom of my cup and I'm just going to add a little bit more of that food coloring, watercolor, whatever you have available. And you can take your straw from a previously used color. They're not gonna mix too much, these colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of twirl it around at first, just a little bit, and then start to blow. Okay, I'm gonna 
gonna get my same sheet of paper I was using from before. I'm gonna add another color. And again. Ah! <laughs> going to do there's one more way one more way we can do this okay i want to give everybody plenty of options because i know not everybody has bubbles at their house not everybody has all these ingredients that we need so what we're going to do for our last color pour a little bit of this water out a little bit of water in the bottom of your cup let's go back to our dish soap add a couple drops i'm going to add a little bit more than i did to my blue just so I can get lots of bubbles, okay? And after we've added a little bit of dish soap to our water, you can get some acrylic paint, some craft paint. Um, your parents might have some at home or maybe you have some in your art supplies. And all you're gonna do is squeeze a little bit of that in the bottom of our glass. And what you're gonna do is take that straw we've been using and just mix up this concoction of water and paint and soap. And here we're gonna go, we're gonna blow. Got those bubbles up top. And remember, you're gonna have to repeat these steps a couple of times because you're not gonna be able to see the color immediately. You wanna layer the color a lot so you can see it and it's a lot more vibrant. Who remembers what that word means? Bright, right? Vibrant and bright, noticeable. Okay, so as you can see, look at all the different supplies we used. Here we used um, food coloring or liquid watercolor, soap, and um, water, that was that combination. Then this lighter blue over here, you can see is very, very faint, very hard to see, but we used our acrylic paint for that. You can add a little bit more acrylic paint if you want that to be a little bit brighter, if you want that color to come out a little bit more. But as you can see in our test here, our bubbles and food coloring or water, liquid watercolor did the best job, right? So we just got that bubble, combination that you can find from the store and added it to our paper okay so you want to design both sides because next week we're going to put all the design pieces of paper together that we've been working on to make a sketchbook that we can work in throughout the summer thank you so much for tuning in for another week of collaborative corner we miss you guys and we hope to see you soon don't forget to like and subscribe Bye. 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 Y'all ready for this? Do do do.